Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again from Illinois, the old shop teacher. Today uh, we're going to do machine shop tip 63, and it's going to be a continuation of adjusting Gibbs on the lathe. And if you recall, in the last uh, couple lessons, we adjusted the Gibbs on the Atlas lathe. And they are, uh, you can read this, but you might have read that in the last one, but they were what we call straight Gibbs. The closing lathe uses uh, tapered gibbs. Now so does the uh, hardinge lay that I have and I suppose other hardinge lays as well. Also tapered uh, uh, gibbs are used on the Bridgeport mills. Actually they're a lot easier and quicker to adjust. Especially if you don't take them apart to clean it. Now I am going to clean this one on the closing uh, 5900 series 12 inch lathe. But tapered gibbs use two screws. The screws are located in each end of the tapered gib. One screw acts as an adjustment while the other screw acts as a locking mechanism because tapered gibbs are wider on one end than the other. That's kind of redundant, isn't it? And they slide in and out creating more or less contact between the sliding mechanisms. A little side trip before we uh, get started here. Uh, I'm a South Bend lathe fan, even though I do not currently own one, but I know that many of you do. And uh, I was down in Springfield, Missouri not long ago, and I went into the big Grizzly Tool store, and uh, which is pretty awesome to see, by the way. Didn't buy anything other than a t-shirt. And uh, it says on it, one good turn deserves another, the South Bend Lathe Company. Also, there's a nice logo on the front of the shirt. And did you know that Grizzly has a complete line of South Bend lathe uh, products, including uh, uh, drills and saws and, and lathes? They did buy out all the rights of the South Bend Lathe Company and are uh, making them using the old logos. Of course, they're made over the pond, but they're the Grizzly's high end. They are not cheap but they appear to be real nice tools. Get yourself one of these shirts. Standing at the closing lathe now, and there are two sets of gibbs. One is on the compound rest or compound slide and the other is on the cross slide. I've got this loosened up so I can turn it around. On the cross slide, this is the adjusting screw to tighten or loosen the gibbs and all you're doing is forcing really a wedge in there is what it amounts to but first you would loosen the locking screw on the back side and then you could make your adjustment and we're adjusting this so we have just a nice uh, sliding fit this one isn't bad doesn't even really need adjusting but I'm going to show you how to do it and I am going to take this all apart and clean it I, it has never been cleaned since I have owned it on the compound now, there's the adjusting screw. And turning this around to the back side, the locking screw is in this uh, uh, little recess right here, counter bore. And always have that backed off when you make your adjustment. It's backed off now. Let me double check. I thought I did it. Backed off. And then we could make the adjustment right here. By moving that in a little bit. Ooh, that's tight. Well, I'm going to take this apart and then we're going to do it properly. So, I've already taken the screws off, uh, the nuts off here that allow this to rotate, and this will lift right off. I hope. No, I guess I left one nut on here. So, that's got to come off. The thing is, if you don't have the nuts on there, these are T-bolts. The T-bolts will drop down uh, into the uh, casting. All right, that's going to take a second to get off. All right, now I do have the nut off, and this will lift right off. There's the uh, T-nuts I was just talking about. And when you get around into this position, one of them will drop down a little bit and won't move until it's lifted up. I'm going to clean all the chips out of there and we'll take this over to the bench and take it apart. To take this apart 
back off this nut which is a 9 16 so I've already got it loosened I like to put everything in a little pan where I don't lose it and that will pull off there is a Woodruff key there and we need to remove the key half moon key correctly called a Woodruff key well I already dropped it on the floor and uh, I'm not going to look for it now and then this will pull off you've got uh, a collar here with a set screw which I've already loosened and then that'll pull off these are two separate pieces uh, loosening your uh, knurled thumb screw here will allow that to come off <clears throat> so that we can clean it there's a series of washers here and a little uh, thrust washer uh, not washer, thrust, be thrust bearing so you can see they sure went to the extra mile and expense in building this but I don't want to lose those so I'm going to uh, put the nut on here just so they don't temporarily so they don't drop off you know losing something is really a pain in the neck now I have to loosen these two cap screws socket head cap screws and this is going to pull off do that off camera take that cap screw out the other ones are already off now we'll be able to unscrew the entire nut and back it out of there and this is all going to be cleaned real good but I like to do that out in the driveway even though it's cold right now it's uh, just before Christmas and this is really dirty some chips in there I like to spray it off with brake cleaner but I, I like to do that outside not in the house probably against EPA rules by the way the EPA I consider is one of the worst agencies that we have in this country I believe it to be only five percent than Al-Qaeda possibly Al-Qaeda runs it but uh, it could be the ruination of this nation I know that most of you conservatives will agree with me so there's the screw it needs a good cleaning there's some chips in there I don't like it when I get uh, a political and I think probably some of you don't either now there's the brass nut here's the uh, the end of it and we need to loosen this uh, set screw and then I'm hoping that the nut will pull out so that we can get this apart off camera the brass nut is pushed partially out I'll have to tap it from the other side I backed off the gibbs again here is the uh, locking screw on this end I backed that off a little bit and then I backed off this gib or this the screw rather the actual gib is uh, right here now this should slide so I can take it apart and she's gonna come off the, the gib dropped out pretty uh, well can you tell that it's tapered or not that'll have to be cleaned up real good a lot of chips in there on the dove on right there this of course is the dovetail mated with that dovetail and remember that on these machine slides the actual surface is uh, right here and here uh, mating with this surface that's what's actually sliding and giving your your you your accuracy and the gib is simply uh, changing the pressure that is between those two surfaces now this is where we really need to get oil and sometimes when we oil a machine we're not we're squirting it in in various places and we're not getting it right down here where it's needed that's true on any slides now on big automated machinery like at Caterpillar and that they got oil, automatic oilers that keep those uh, uh, lubricated here's the brass nut let's see which side it's going to come out better on brass is soft careful how you treat that 
remember there was a set screw there and I've got that backed off and there's the nut Acme thread of course and I'm going to take the burr off of here where my thumb is on both sides I'll put it on the lathe and just dress it up a little bit so it slides in there uh, I can remove it from either direction I don't want it to slide any uh, easier that, that's a very nice fit you can tell that this is well made so now I'm going to clean everything up and then I'm going to start reassembling it and oiling it real nice but we don't want even one chip on it that's going to take me several minutes outside <laughs> 